Hi, Mel, can you see us? Yes, can you see me? I'm sorry, I just had to pick up my kids. Oh. No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm Detective okay. Minter. This is Detective Gonzalez. Hey, guys. Very, very nice to meet you. Likewise. Um, so, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Give me one sec. I need to give my daughter a direction. Okay. I'm talking to the refrigerator. Hey, guys, look at it down. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Hey, that's where the snacks are. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead and state your name and, and where you, what you do and where you work. Uh, Heather Marshall Vasquez, MD. I am an emergency physician. I um, my full time employment job is through Holy Cross Medical Center in Taos, New Mexico, where I'm the medical director. And then I work as an independent contractor for Artesia General Hospital. I work sort of two to four shifts a month down there. Okay. Okay. So for January twenty seventh of this year, um, you came into contact with Alexi Treviso. Can you tell us what happened on that day? Just from the beginning of everything that happened. Yes, she, um, she presented, I want to say it was around 1130 at night. I don't have the chart in front of me, so I, I, there's some details I'm going to have to sort of guesstimate from my, from my recollection. Uh, her presentation complaint was for back pain. She was brought in by her mother. We were told that she began having um, back pain after coming home from cheerleading practice. Sounds like she had gone to bed and then woken up, woken her mother up. And so her mother brought her in. And when I initially evaluated her, she really wouldn't sit still. She wouldn't really let me examine her. She had on, on a very baggy sweatshirt. And, um, you know, a 19 year old with back pain, the vast majority of the time, that's not going to be anything serious. But she was just not really acting right. And so I became concerned that there was something else going on technically a kidney stone or something like that. I asked the patient and her mother if she could be pregnant. Her mother said, no, under no circumstances. Um, I've been buying pads for her every month. Um, and so our, I ordered our normal evaluation, which would be some basic labs, including a pregnancy test, as well as a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis to make sure she didn't have a kidney stone or something like that. The price test came back positive um, an hour late, maybe 45 minutes later. I can't, I can't tell you exactly how much time had elapsed when I became aware that her test was positive. So at that point, we sent it for a blood confirmatory test, which is what we call a quantitative HCG, which tells us, um, it gives us a number instead of just a positive or negative for price test, it gives us a number. And the reason why that number was really significant was because um, one of the concerns that you would always have in a young woman who is having back or abdominal pain could be a tubal pregnancy. And so oftentimes we need to correlate the, the level, the pregnancy hormone level to determine if it's likely that there could be a tubal pregnancy. Um, there's no obstetrics or gynecology at uh, RTG General, and so it would require transferring her. Um, I also verified at that time that we didn't really have the right kind, in the, the ER has an ultrasound machine, but it didn't have the right probe on there. Um, it had what we call the vascular probe, not the um, endovaginal or the abdominal one, which would, which would be the ways we would look to see if there was a tubal pregnancy or a viable pregnancy. So I was going to have to call the ultrasound tech in. And so it, it was taking the lab a little bit longer than I would have thought to give us the actual quantitative HCG level. And so at that point, I started getting very nervous because I figured, well, maybe it's a really high number, you know, they, maybe they had to dilute it down. And I wanted to check on the patient and I asked the nurse where the patient was and he said, well, she's in the bathroom. And I said, oh my goodness, what, you know, how long has she been in there? And she'd been in there for like 20 minutes. And so at that point I became very concerned and I said, you need to get her out of there right now. So he, it took a while for them to find a key. He, the nurse was knocking on the door and we heard the toilet flush several times. And so um, at, at that point, finally, the door opened and there was just blood everywhere. And so even though we didn't have the right probe for the ultrasound machine, I felt like I'm just going to look because I had already called the tech in, but the tech wasn't there yet. So we took her, I took her directly to the room and did a um, ultrasound. I couldn't see anything. Again, it was the wrong probe. It's not the right probe to even... I, I don't even know if you could see any, like it's, it's the kind of probe that we use to put like special IVs in, in the neck. Mm. So it just, it wasn't the right kind of probe. 
Um, but she was bleeding a lot. And so we went directly from um, doing the um, ultrasound. And again, I was waiting for the tech to come in to doing a pelvic exam. And it probably took me 10 or 15 minutes to, um, when I did the pelvic exam, her cervix, the, the opening to the uterus was just wide open. And there was just blood pouring out. And I was, I was really mystified as to what could be happening because I thought, well, maybe she's having a miscarriage. Um, there was, it probably took me 10 or 15 minutes to evacuate all the blood. And it, just as I was finishing with that exam, the charge nurse came into the ER and said, I need you out here right now. And I walked out into the main department. Um, the nurse was still in the, a, a different nurse was still in the room with the patient trying to get her, um, clean her up after the exam. And the nurse said, the charge nurse said, um, the, the housekeeper and the secretary found a dead baby in the trash can. And, and so I said, well, where? Because now I need to verify, I need to verify if the child was alive. So um, they brought me the trash can. I ran into the trauma two room, the resuscitation room, and dumped it out. And it did not take me very long to determine that the child was dead. And I mean, the decision to not attempt resuscitation, really, the, the, the temperature was cool. And, it, and, and I also did not want to contaminate if it was a crime scene. Um, so at that point, um, then my attention shifted to making sure that the mother was stabilized because I realized she just delivered a baby. I didn't know where the placenta was. You know, she could die from a postpartum hemorrhage. So I contacted the on-call obstetrician at Loveless Regional in, um, in Roswell and said, I need, to, I need to transfer this patient to you emergently. They said, yep, just send her up. Um, I think the fire department just took her up right away. But before um, we transferred her, I mean, I, I talked to my team. I said, look, we're not going to talk to her until we have police present. I would like, I want witnesses present for our discussion with her. At that point, several of your officers arrived. They arrived very quickly. And we went in and I said, we found a dead baby in the trash. And she said, well, it came out of me and it wasn't moving, so I just put it in the trash. And the mother started screaming at her, screaming, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And this is after they had both sworn up and down that there was no chance she'd be pregnant. Um, and so at that point, once we got her transferred, and I believe that the, the um, officers called for, um, I, I'm not sure what steps they did, but we made sure we didn't touch the dead baby, we didn't do anything because we did not want to contaminate the crime scene. And that's then I documented and that's it. What was the baby in, in the trash can? I did not find it. It was my secretary who you should speak to. She told me um, a few weeks later that she was the one. Um, and I, but I was told it was, it was in a plastic bag that was tied off and then stuck into a plastic bag and then they put trash, she put trash in the top to try to hide it. Okay. So he was out. Yeah, that was what was told to me. But he was outside the bag when you, you saw him. Yes. They had opened the bag up and I just turned, I took the trash can, I just turned it upside down and dropped, dumped everything on the bed. Okay. And you didn't see any trauma or, or anything to the baby or? I, I, um, I have, don't have a very good recollection of that. I, I, my brain was 100% focused on, is this a, a patient I should try to resuscitate? And I, once I made the determination not to resuscitate, I, I, all of my attention turned to um, making sure that the mother didn't die. Okay. So did any of the nursing staff find the placenta at the emergency room? No. No? Okay. We, I have no idea what happened with the placenta. I, ex she didn't deliver it at uh, Loveless either. She probably put it in the toilet, would be my guess. And would that, been, would that have been something that was able to be flushed? It depends on how broken up it was. I mean, you know, if it's torn, you, it potentially could have been flushable. Or it's possible the housekeeper could have thrown it away without thinking it was just bloody, um, you know, because there was blood everywhere in the bathroom. Really? And did she, did she say anything other than after you told her that you found a, a deceased baby, did she say anything? Just that it was, it, it wasn't moving. So she put it in the trash. Okay. And mom screaming, I knew it. I knew it. Okay. It was a really unpleasant experience. 
I'm, I'm sorry for that. I really am. Is there anything um, you think we should know that we haven't asked? No, I mean, you have autopsy results and you can, you know, obviously make your decisions based on that. She was extremely duplicitous. She lied to us the entire time. It was very, I mean, it was an extraordinarily difficult case. Um, the nurse and staff were distraught. The housekeeper was distraught. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, I see, I, I, it's been a terrible case. Yes, ma'am. One of the one of the worst I've seen in my career. Um, I've been a doctor. I've been an emergency doctor for twenty years. I've actually never seen anything like this. What was the lady's name that found the baby? That was when it was tied up in the bag. Uh, that was our secretary, um, Lori L O R I, and I don't, okay. I can't remember her last. Okay. But I have her in front. We talked to her. Oh, you already talked to her. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't have anything yet. Yeah, I don't have any other questions. All right, Doc. I appreciate you. You know your time and and what you do. And uh, if we have any other questions, would you mind talking to us again? No, not at all. And of course, I'm prepared to testify if I have to. Uh, yeah, you're. That's probably going to happen. So, okay. And just the only thing I ask is please help me prepare for it if I have to do that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of course. There. With, with cases like this, they're called pre-trial interviews, okay. so you'll be prepped, you know, everybody in this case will be prepped prior to trial. Okay. Well, okay. officers, I don't envy what you're having to do, I, and I know it must have been a difficult decision, but I think your, your courage is, is um, thank you for doing, doing what's right. Neither the mother nor, neither the mother of the patient nor the patient even asked what the gender of the baby was. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Nor do I, ma'am. Nor do I. Okay. Well, just know my prayers are with you guys as you sort of sort through this. So. You, you as well, ma'am, and uh, have a good rest of your weekend, okay? Okay, will do. Thank All you, right. sir. Bye now. Bye.